Hey, Newbie Dan here, and let's talk about Kickback. I shot a video of two great examples of Kickback. I shot each of them from three different angles, and one of the angles is in slow motion. And I managed to do it without injuring myself, but just barely. So stick around and see what we can learn. Kickback on a table saw is extremely dangerous. I've seen examples of boards being shot 20 feet across a room and being embedded in a wall. Needless to say, you do not want to be hit by wood traveling that fast. But along with the danger of flying wood, kickback can drag your hand into the blade, as this terrible simulation shows, causing incredible amounts of damage, including possible loss of fingers. I'll spare you the pictures. Google table saw kickback injury if you're curious and have a strong stomach. So let's learn what kickback is and how to minimize the chances of experiencing it. Then let's apply what we learn, okay? I'm removing the riving knife from my table saw. A riving knife would make it harder to generate the kind of kickback I'm going for. I'm not saying that you can never get kickback with a riving knife, but it's certainly less likely. This is my first attempt, and I almost forgot to get my face shield. Think it's not necessary? Think again. Look at me lean across to turn on the saw. I'm scared of kickback and I haven't even turned on the saw yet. That was footage from my first attempt, which failed to generate kickback. Here's my first successful attempt. I'm using a long push stick to keep my hand from being anywhere near the blade and hiding over to the side so I'm not in the path of kickback. Or so I thought. Look at my hand shake. I'm having trouble keeping the stock straight. Remember, I'm trying to create kickback here, so I'm intentionally doing a lot of things wrong. We'll talk about what those things are in a moment, but first, let's just focus on the kickback. And please, never ever try this yourself. Even with all the safety precautions I took, I still almost got nailed, which you'll see shortly. Let's see that again. Here's what it did to my cabinets. Glad that wasn't my body in the way. Let's look at it from above. Here's another angle. So fast you have to watch it twice before you even see the stock move. Let's look at this in slow motion. As the stock begins to bind between the fence and the blade, look at all the additional sawdust being generated. Look at how much the fence moves. Let me tell you, it takes a lot to get the fence to move that much. There's a lot of energy here. Let's look at the second example. I've added some cardboard here to help soften the impact. Well, that was unexpected. Let's look at that again. I'll slow it down a little. I guess the cardboard wasn't needed after all. Let's see how close I came to getting injured. Remind me not to wear this shirt on camera again, at least not until I've lost a few pounds. As I start the cut, Here's where my body is, and here's about where my shoulder is. As I continue the cut, I keep moving away, which turns out to be a good thing. <laughs> At this point, the board's just past my body. The board probably would have missed me, but not by much. Like I said earlier, even with all the precautions I took, I still came close to getting nailed. This is also why I use a face shield. You never know where the stock's going to go during kickback. Okay, enough about me. Let's get back to the kickback and the slow motion camera. After the first kickback, I was pretty sure I could safely move this camera closer to the action, so we've got a much better view this time. This is normal speed. One more time at normal speed. Now let's see it in slow motion, which is a quarter speed, or about 120 frames per second. That's a great example. One more time, then we'll break it down. As the teeth at the back of the blade come up from the table, they grab the stock and start to dig in. When they finally get a good enough grip, they lift the board and throw it back. That's kickback for you. But it's not the only way that kickback happens. Kickback can also happen when the stock gets pinched between the fence and blade. Sometimes this happens because your fence is misaligned. So for this demo, I've towed the outfeed end of my fence in towards the blade. This picture is exaggerated, of course, but I've actually towed it in quite a bit. 
and I've put a clamp at the end of the fence to keep it from flexing. So as the stock moves through the cut, it'll get squeezed between the fence and the blade. I'm expecting a lot of kickback here, so I put an old crosscut sled up to protect everything back there. I learned from the last kickback, so this time I'm on the other side of the table. Do you blame me? Let's give it a shot. Well, that was pretty pathetic. Unfortunately, this ended up being the best I could do for this type of kickback, but you get the idea. You can see from this angle that as soon as the stock got away from the push stick, the friction between the blade and stock caused the stock to get kicked back. Or lightly tossed back. Whatever. <laughs> a misaligned fence isn't the only thing that can cause wood to get pinched. Natural wood, as opposed to manufactured wood like plywood or MDF, can contain enough internal stress that when you cut it, it warps. That can cause pinching between the fence and the blade, or it could cause the kerf to close around the blade, both of which could cause violent kickback. With the channel name like The Newbie Woodworker, you know my primary focus is on, well, The Newbie Woodworker. But I know that you guys have a wide range of experience, so I'd like to draw on that right now. I need your help. Yes, you. I need your help. First, a disclaimer. Everybody is responsible for their own safety. Take everything I say with a grain of salt and double check anything that sounds iffy. If you get hurt, it's your responsibility. Okay, here's what I need from you guys. I need you to watch the rest of this video, obviously. Then I need you to leave comments. If I say anything you disagree with, or anything that's just flat out wrong, or if I leave out something important, I need you to tell me and everyone else about it in the comments below. Yes, I'm actually asking you to critique me, or rather, critique the safety advice in this video. I suppose you could also comment on things you agree with if you wanted to. But I know I don't know everything, and some of what I think I know is probably wrong. I'd hate to be spewing false information here. So please, stick with me through the rest of this video, and then leave comments so we're all as safe as we can be. Thanks! The best ways to lower our chances of injury due to kickback are through preparation and proper procedure, not by reaction. What do I mean by that? Once your stock starts kicking back, it's highly unlikely, if not impossible, to react quickly enough to prevent injury. Take a look at my reaction time in this video. As the wood kicks back, the stock pushes the push stick up and back. Then the push stick starts to come forward because I was pushing it forward when the stock kicked back. It isn't until here that I actually start to react, way past the time the stock would have hit me if I were standing in its way, and I was expecting kickback. So we can't count on quick reflexes to save us. Obviously, we can never completely prevent unexpected things from happening, but we can certainly improve our odds. Preparation is what we do before we make any cuts. For example, installing a riving knife and leaving it there. I admit I don't do a wide variety of cuts, but I've yet to encounter a situation where I had to remove the riving knife other than to use a dado stack or shoot videos like this. If you know of a situation where you need to remove the riving knife, please leave a comment explaining it. As we talked about before, this kickback happened because the rear teeth on the blade grabbed the stock. If we had a riving knife installed, the board couldn't have touched the teeth long enough for them to grab the board. Same thing if we'd used a blade guard. See how the board shifts over this direction? I put a yellow line where the riving knife would be, and made it a little thicker so you can see it. See how the riving knife would have prevented the board from turning enough for the teeth to grab it? Riving knife. Use it. Or a splitter. Search YouTube for more information. There are other attachments to help prevent kickback, like anti-kickback prawls. What other anti-kickback attachments do you use? Leave a comment and let us know. In order to help keep your stock from being pinched between the fence and the blade, Make sure your fence is aligned properly and not towed in to the back of the blade. See my video, Four Easy Ways to Align a Table Saw's Fence, for more information. And consider checking your blade's alignment. See my Table Saw Tune-Up video for more information on that. There's links for both these videos in the description below. If you have other tips for preparation steps that help prevent kickback, please leave them in the comments too. For example, I've read that kickback can be caused by using the wrong blade. I always use a combination blade when I'm not using a dado stack. Are there times when using a combination blade could be tempting kickback? Let me know in the comments. Procedure is what we do when we perform the cut. Things we have to think about for each and every cut. Never stand in the line of fire.
As we've seen, this is the main line of fire. We've also seen that this area can sometimes be in the line of fire, but I was going to the extreme to try and create kickback, so I don't know how likely it is in real life. What do you guys think? For me, I stand over here. I think for most right-handers, this is the normal place to stand. Make a habit of it, and after a while you won't even have to think about it. To all you lefties out there, where do you stand? Do you put the fence on the other side? Let us know in the comments. The technical definition of a crosscut is cutting across the grain. This is the direction of the grain, so a crosscut would be cutting across it, like this. But for stock like plywood, the grain isn't that important as far as kickback is concerned, and MDF and melamine don't even have grain. So, for the purposes of this video about kickback, I'd rather define a crosscut as when the stock being cut is wider than it is long. Notice here where I was doing a crosscut with the fence? Never, ever do this. I was doing it intentionally because I knew it would dramatically increase the chance of kickback. The reality is, you can get seriously hurt doing this, so never, ever do a crosscut using the fence. Instead, use a crosscut sled, hence the name or a miter gauge, or a miter saw, or even a circular saw or handheld saw. Personal opinion time. There are times when I need to cut large pieces of manufactured wood, like plywood, that I think it's okay to cut it using the fence, even if the stock is wider than it is long. For example, if I had some plywood that is 15 inches long and 18 inches wide, I wouldn't be too worried about cutting it with the fence. What do you guys think? Am I wrong? Where do we draw the line? Let me know in the comments. While we're talking about crosscuts and the fence, let me point out a couple of other no-nos. When using a miter gauge or crosscut sled, never use the fence at the same time. This can result in kickback. If you're making multiple cuts of the same width and you need a stop lock, you can clamp a piece of scrap wood to the fence. But make sure that by the time your stock has reached the blade, it isn't touching the stop lock anymore. I'll do a separate video on push sticks, but let's cover them a little here as they relate to kickback. Let's take another look at this video. See where the push stick is making contact with the stock? This is another bad thing I did when I was trying to intentionally create kickback. When you're using this type of push stick, you need to push closer to the blade. Otherwise, the stock will twist, virtually guaranteeing kickback. You can also use two of these, like Matthias Wandel is doing here, if you're more coordinated than I am. If you're using this type of push stick, you can, if you want, put it closer to the fence, as long as you keep pressing the tip down and pressing the whole thing towards the fence. The gripper from Microjig does a great job helping to limit the potential for kickback. If it wasn't so expensive, I'd recommend everyone have one in their shop. You can't use it for everything, but it's really pretty versatile. Finally, this type of push block gives you great control over the stock, so it can really help limit the chances of a kickback. However, it puts your hand down really close to the blade, so if kickback does happen, you're probably toast. That's why I only use this push block on wider cuts, where I can keep my hand far away from the blade. Well, that's all I got. I'm really looking forward to reading your comments, regardless of whether you say I did good, or I was wrong about something, or I left something out. I know some of you feel very strongly about some of these issues, and I absolutely love that. I really, really want a dialogue here. Just remember that everyone has feelings, so while it's okay to disagree with someone, please don't attack them personally. Let's just have fun here. I know this is a serious topic, for sure, but let's leave the blood on the floor of the workshop where it belongs. <laughs> I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!